Hey guys, Coach Rach here. This podcast is intended to inspire, educate, and support you on your health and fitness journey. I am not a medical doctor and cannot give any professional medical advice. If you are suffering from any kind of medical condition, whether it's mental or physical, please seek help from a qualified health practitioner. Welcome to the Diet Starts Never podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Nigro, aka Coach Rach. This podcast will teach you how to live your healthiest life in and out of the gym and put yourself first again. Oh, and we get long lasting results here. I've made it my mission to help my clients ditch the diet mentality and heal their relationship with food and themselves. After transforming hundreds of bodies and minds, it's your turn. Are you ready? Welcome back to episode 20 of Diet Starts Never. This episode is a friendly reminder that if you have to keep going back to that diet, it's not working. I know you really want to give Weight Watchers or Keto or Octavia a try. Again, I don't blame you. But how many times do you have to lose weight and gain it back to realize that the diet is failing you? I know you might want a quick fix, but that is not going to get you a long-term solution. Rushed results equals half-assed results, and we don't do anything half-assed around here. Restriction will always lead to overindulgence. You know, guys, this podcast is called Diet Starts Never because your relationship with food and your diet should be one that you spend time building. It's going to take a lifetime, but if you continue to do these negative, fad, restrictive diets, It's going to take way longer, so why not start working towards that now while getting results? You should be taking the time to learn what foods you love and make you feel good. You'll learn that you can indulge in moderation. Once you allow yourself to live with that balance, you will never have to start over again or on a Monday, hence why diet starts never. Some days you'll indulge a little more and some days you will keep it clean because you genuinely want to. The most important part is you will never feel guilty about eating something again. But this relationship comes with a lot of mindset work. You genuinely have to want to put healthy food in your body because it makes you feel good and it improves your health. You know, when you indulge on something that isn't your everyday norm, you need to know that it's okay. You did not ruin consistent clean eating or any progress with one meal, one weekend, or one cake pop from Starbucks. And you don't have to say F it for the rest of the weekend and continue to overindulge. That's why we stay stuck in this constant battle because we think every time we eat something that may be not so great for us or that we will consider bad that we ruin so much progress and we'll just go throughout the entire weekend and whatever, it'll be okay because we'll start over on Monday. There's no starting over anymore. Your diet starts never because you are creating a diet that works for you. Your diet is your lifestyle and you are allowed to change it whenever you want and you can try new things. But there are definitely types of diets you should be avoiding if you want to heal your relationship with food while getting the most badass results possible. (laughs) Trust me, guys, I have tried all of the quick fixes. I literally used to sit in my bedroom like in high school. This was in high school, Googling how to lose 10 pounds in a week and then proceed to starve myself. Do you guys remember like that three-day military diet that involved like an egg and a half a grapefruit for breakfast with coffee because it claimed to like speed up your metabolism. And then it was like tuna for lunch. I don't know. It was so stupid. I don't even want to cap back into it. But so then again, I would perceive to starve myself while burning as many calories as possible to only end up overeating on anything and everything I can get my hands on the following weekend. So today I'm going to debunk why these four quick fix diets are not the answer, why they are terribly unhealthy for you. Um, They are definitely fan favorites because yes, they will help you lose a drastic amount of weight quickly, but they will make you sick. They will cause damage to your body. And after we go through all of that, I'm going to give you my top tips for leaning out, toning up, and burning belly fat in the healthiest, most sustainable way possible. The biggest thing these diets have in common is they are not sustainable. You will always be starting and stopping them again, creating that yo-yo effect. This will lead to losing an unhealthy amount of weight very quickly, 
but it'll also lead to gaining that weight back and then some even quicker. If a diet is right for you, you shouldn't have to do anything different for the rest of your life. You should be able to sustain it. That's why I have chosen to live a restriction-free lifestyle. Yes, it comes with some guidelines and rules I personally set for myself. You can set your own for yourself. For example, like I follow the 80-20 rule. Sometimes when I'm in a calorie deficit, I keep it tighter. I keep it cleaner. And that's because I genuinely want to for my health. Not because I know it's going to speed up my fat loss any quicker because it's not. Fad diets are trendy weight loss programs. Ugh, I hate that those two words have ever even ended up next to each other. Trendy weight loss programs that promise drastic results. They promise these drastic results because of an extreme calorie deficit. And if you've listened to any of my prior episodes, you know extreme deficits are no bueno. Most diets are not backed up by science and come from companies who are just trying to make money off of your pain and misery. Misery. They will also lead to negative health consequences, negative biofeedback. If you listen to my last episode, you know what that means. Any diet that claims the following criteria criteria is a fad diet unless provided by a doctor for a medical condition. If your doctor's just like, yeah, you need to lose weight, eat under 1,200 calories a day, like I would probably second guess that, but I'm not a doctor. I am not a doctor. Okay, so if a diet promotes consuming large amounts of a certain type of food, avoid it. So like the grapefruit diet where you eat like a good amount of grapefruit, that actually leads me to laugh. I'm laughing because I'm thinking of in Mean Girls when she's like, yeah, I'm on the cranberry diet. I just, all I do is drink cranberry for days and I lose weight. I'm going to lose 10 pounds, whatever she says. And then um, Caddy's like, Cranberry juice is filled with sugar. Like that literally makes no sense because it literally makes no sense. It's like a liquid eliminating diet, which is just going to, it's just going to make you feel like absolute shit. High protein, low carb. Nope. High fiber, low calorie, hello, digestive issues and constantly going to the bathroom. High fat, low carb. Uh, no, thank you. Um, liquid diet such as juice cleanses or cranberry <laughs> juice cleanses, fasting, or eliminating entire food groups. The biggest red flag is a company advertising that their product or diet guarantees weight loss at an abnormally fast rate. Anything more than two pounds per week and then with little to no effort. Don't get me started on one size fits all programs that don't take into consideration your specific needs, your body, or your lifestyle. If you cannot see yourself eating this way for the rest of your life, You should not be doing it to lose weight. You should not be giving up an entire macronutrient group ever, especially for weight loss. So like you're telling me you can give up carbs for the rest of your life. If you say yes, that's not true. Like what about like champagne and cake for celebrations, like Sunday sauce with your fam, bread at the table. Like I fucking live for that shit. I'm not giving that up for the rest of my life. You will literally have to handcuff me and throw me in a river. So that brings me into fad diet number one. What I personally believe is the worst of the worst for your long-term health, the keto diet. Keto is known for its quick and drastic weight loss, but it wasn't intended to be used that way. This is going to blow your mind, this fact. The diet was created in the 1920s for children with epilepsy to manage their seizures. It was only created to be followed under close supervision of a medical doctor. The fact that somebody realized like, oh shit, you can lose weight so quickly from this and then took advantage and capitalized on it. Oh my God. Oh, okay. So the details, the diet decreases carbs to less than 30 grams a day. This would help the child's neurotransmitter activity shift to healthier balances, resulting in fewer seizures. So how does it work for weight loss? It consists of moderate levels of protein and a very, very high fat intake, like 70 to 80%, accompanied with like little to no carbs, like zero to 30 grams of carbs a day. So because carbs are the body's number one source of fuel, of energy, removing carbs and following the keto diet will force the body into a process called ketosis. When this happens, glycogen stores are depleted, 
which leads to the body having no choice but to turn protein and fat into ketones for energy. That is protein and fat that you consume. This all happens in the liver. So just think about the long-term effects it can have on your liver when it's literally your your body's asking it now to work double, triple time and teaching it to function an entirely different way in which it was created to. So you will see results quickly because ketosis is a metabolic response to starvation, meaning your body will think it's about to starve and die from the lack of carbs, from the lack of energy. So why would anyone want to put their body through that? You might ask. I don't know why so many people do it. I think because a lot of us are uneducated about the diet. So anyway, after a few months on keto, you'll hit a plateau because this is when the body will shift from using proteins and fat as fuel to storing any food consumed as energy for later on. Your metabolism is literally getting turned off from burning calories and can only create energy for survival. So it's taking any calories put into it and storing it as energy. Your body will also begin to store fat as well. So of course, majority of people on keto will regain the weight back and usually more. This happens when carbs are reintroduced to the diet for sure. And of course, we're going to end up overindulging on carbs because we limited them for so long. So the second you allow yourself to eat those carbs, oh my God, you're going to go crazy. And then your sugar is going to be thrown off. You're going to feel like shit and you're going to gain the weight back so quickly. But we don't want that to happen. This is not going to happen for you. You is hypothetical you. This is you in the past who might have tried this, but you moving forward is not, this isn't going to fly for you anymore. So not only is your metabolism now damaged, but it can't lose weight anymore until it, until balance is restored, which can be done. Remember guys, your metabolism, your metabolism isn't broken. It's damaged, but you'll be gaining unwanted weight while doing so. Okay. Now that we all hate keto, what shall we debunk next? We're going to talk about like the general 1200 calories or less diets. So think Octavia, Atkins, South Beach, juice cleanses. Touching on this slightly because I've explained it so many times in the past, in past podcasts, but my goal is to drill this in your head so you get it. Your specific body requires a certain amount of calories to function properly every single day. When I say function properly, I mean for your metabolism to be able to convert food from energy, and then have enough calories to burn. Your body burns a minimum of X amount of calories per day, which is known as your basal metabolic rate. That X is dependent on your age, gender, height, weight, and sex. You should never eat below your BMR because your body needs the minimum of what it's putting out back in. Most people's BMRs are 1200 or above 1200 calories. So a one size fits all diet of eating under 1200 calories a day will do damage to most people's metabolisms. I say most because as you get older, your BMR goes down. As you lose weight, your BMR goes down. It's going to be specific and individual to everyone, but a general rule of thumb is no diets under 1200 calories. Shit. I won't even let my clients go under 1300 calories. Now, let's say you stick with this all week. You try to eat as minimal as possible by cutting out fats and carbs and trying low-calorie hacks by like dipping romaine lettuce in ranch all day um, because you're so hungry and need something to snack on. By the end of the week, you are so hungry and your hormones are so out of whack from the lack of nutrients that you are craving everything, more specifically sugary foods and carbs. Now, the weekend is here, and you end up binging on everything you restricted yourself from all week. So your days of starving yourself to stay under 1,200 calories now turned into weekends well over 2,500 plus calories, eliminating your calorie deficit and leaving you guilty as fuck and starting over Monday for the hundredth time. Now, if you eat in a proper calorie deficit for your body while incorporating a balance of nutritious foods and fun foods, you will eliminate the desire to overindulge and binge while actually seeing results. Okay, moving on. Intermittent fasting, 
Although this is technically not a fad diet, it's more of a protocol. I think it's being abused. It's on my list because most of the people I hear who do it tell me they're doing it in hopes to lose weight quickly. Uh, Intermittent fasting is a strategy that shortens your window of eating time. The normal ratio is 16 hours fasted with eight hour eating window. The reason people get The reason people get results with this is because of the calorie deficit, not because of the fasting. So we need to be very clear on that. I think the protocol is abused because most people will try to eat as little as possible in that eating window. So you will need to eat the same amount of food, whether you are fasting or not. If having a smaller eating period makes it mentally easier for you, you absolutely can. But a lot of people will ignore hunger cues because they think they need to stay within this eating window. So like if like your eating window starts at 12 and around like 9, 10 a.m. you're starving, eat. You need to eat. Like you need to listen to your body more importantly than anything. And that's why I consider it a fad diet because it encourages restriction if if using it improperly. I mean, yes, there are definitely benefits of it. But anyway, let's give an example. Person A eats 1,600 calories between 12 and 8 p.m., loses one pound that week. Person B eats 1,600 calories between 7 a.m. and 8 p.m., loses one pound that week. It's the same thing. It's calories in, calories out, causes weight loss. There's no difference. The preference is yours. I would probably freaking hurt someone if I had to wait until 12 o'clock to eat. I am like the queen hangry biatch, but that's just me. Do you? But like, I would probably not do it. Like I said, there are totally benefits, but none have to do with weight loss. I also like to stress the importance of not consuming caffeine on an empty stomach, which intermittent fasting allows, you know, it throws off your hormones, increases your cortisol, makes you feel stressed and anxious. So I personally would not do that. Hey, I'm telling you, don't do that, please. All right, last and final one we are going to debunk today is 75 hard. This one is absolutely the most unsustainable and most people who start to do it will not finish it. The protocol is as follows. Follow any nutrition plan with zero alcohol and no cheat meals, which is already promoting negative relationships with food because if you're living a balanced restriction-free lifestyle, there are no cheat meals. You indulge within moderation, whenever you want. Complete two 45-minute workouts a day, and one must be outside. Most people attempt to go from zero workouts to two a day in hopes to kickstart their weight loss, which always results in a crash and burn. Drink a gallon of water a day. Okay, I love that one. Read 10 pages of an educational or self-improvement book a day. Also love this one. Um, And then the last one I hate is take progress photos every day. I am a big believer that progress photos are one of the best ways to track progress, but every single day is just promoting a negative relationship with your body by focusing on a drastic physical change instead of improving your your health. Oh, and if you miss one day, you need to start over from scratch. No, thank you. So any challenge like that will definitely have benefits like the drinking a water a day, a gallon of water a day and self-improvement reading, that's going to help you build healthy habits for sure. But working out twice a day is not healthy. Having cheap meals is not healthy. Taking progress photos every day is not healthy. It's just so unrealistic for majority of the population who just simply want to lose weight and keep it off to do. 75 hard kind of reminds me of orange theory. The point of the two is to burn as many calories as possible. Yes, it will make you lose weight, but it will increase your total daily energy expenditure so much that you will be unable to sustain it and have, and like you'll have to eat so much to stay in a healthy deficit. You're going to go from burning like 1500 calories a day to like 3000 calories a day, which means you're going to need to be eating well over 2000 calories a day. Of course, it's just general, it's going to be more specific to you later on, but working out seven days a week for 90 minutes, that's putting your activity level at heavy. You have to take your BMR now and multiply it by like 1.7. 
to 1.9, depending what kind of physical, if you have a physical job or not. So anyway, eating that much is just unrealistic for someone who's coming out of like a very sensitive relationship with foods. And if eating more than 1200 calories a day scares you, increasing workouts is not going to be the answer to your weight loss. So as soon as you stop training so much, you will gain the weight back because your body needs to keep up with, your body can't keep up with it anymore. So as soon as you stop training so much, you will most likely gain the weight back the weight back because you lost the weight in such a severe calorie deficit and now you're in such a small calorie deficit that you end up going into a surplus. So extreme lifestyle changes will leave you feeling defeated and frustrated. There is absolutely no scientific approach behind this. The CDC's general guidelines, which we know like are kind of outdated or very outdated. Um, they recommend a minimum exercise two times per week at 75 to 150 minutes of vigorous ex exercise, which is still a reach for most. Most people don't even do that. At the end of the day, weight loss comes from calories in versus calories out. And a lot of people still don't see results this way because one, they have negative biofeedback or they're just trying or they're just lying to themselves and restrict all week and overindulge on the weekend. They're like, yeah, I do so well. Like I barely eat anything. Okay. But like how many alcoholic drinks did you have this weekend? What did you eat while you were drunk? How many different appetizers did you have followed by a meal that you weren't eating all week? And especially while my calorie intake is lower, I want the cleanest, most nutritious sources in my body to support the added stress of a calorie deficit. My number one goal always is to be healthy. I want to spend as much time on this earth as possible with the people I love feeling as incredible as possible so I can show up as the best version of myself every single day. At the end of the day, I don't give a shit what I look like, but my actions the way I support myself result in having an incredible physique. They go hand in hand. It just depends what you want to focus on. Do you want to focus on restricting things that you love so much to desperately chase a physique that is just so unsustainable by eating such low calorie? Or do you want to feel really fucking good and look really good to follow? I want to remind you guys that I've been on my health and fitness journey for 10 years. I'm at the point where I have found what works for me really well. And in order to take my physique to the next level, which is a passion of mine, I'm going to push myself out of my comfort zone a little bit more, but I'm going to push myself out of that comfort zone in a healthy manner. So this works for me. It may not work for you and you might want to follow more of an 80-20 rule. And that is actually what I coach my clients to do. I push the 80-20 rule. It helps them create sustainable habits that feel good. So you guys, the, what we've been waiting for, my recommendations as a health and fitness coach to lose fat and keep it off. Obviously eat in a calorie deficit, a healthy calorie deficit that's calculated for your body. Not, not one that was calculated for me or one of my clients calculated for you. Make sure 80% of your diet is made up of clean, nutrient-dense, unprocessed foods because you want to, not because you have to. Just because I'm telling you to do it doesn't mean you have to do it. You have to genuinely want to put that food in your body. Save 20% for fun foods like pizza, wine, ice cream, because you should 100% incorporate foods you love while losing weight. Move your body daily, whether it's parking further or spending 30 minutes in the gym, just move. Something goes a lot longer way than nothing. Stay hydrated. I you'll always hear me say a gallon a day keeps the fat away. It's just something that I say for myself, but like not really. Like it's not scientifically backed up at all. So don't quote me on it um, or do whatever. But <laughs> the whole idea is your body is made up of majority water, at least 80%. So we want to make sure it's hydrated. Staying hydrated is going to promote positive biofeedback. It's going to get you moving and grooving, getting up, going to the bathroom and getting your steps in. And then finally, get seven to nine hours of sleep every day. Mm -hmm. Sleep is so important. My goal for my clients is that they never need another coach, trainer or program after our time together and that they're set up for life. I want that for you too. 
I'm always, always taking on new clients. Sometimes there will be a wait list. Other times I can get you started right away. If you are ready to leave the yo-yo lifestyle behind, head over to Instagram and DM me the word info, and I'll send you more info on what it's like to work together. Even if you just have some general questions about what you're doing, I'd be happy to help. I'd be happy to just have a discussion. All right, y'all, that is a wrap on today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Please, please, if you learned something, share it with a friend, post it to your Instagram stories and tag me. Sharing it helps me know that you enjoyed it and you learned something. So I continue to create sick, awesome, educational, fun episodes for you guys. Thank you all for your support on here and I will see you.